What up, y'all? It's your boy Flock out here at the Go Power Sports headquarters. Today, we're here to talk about when and why you will use an aluminum catch tank. We got somewhat of a diagram laid out just to show y'all what other parts you'd be using it with. We even got a couple bikes to show y'all examples on. Um, but first things first, do the intro. All right, y'all. So first thing first, let's get into the reasons why you would want to use an aluminum catch tank. One of the reasons being you have a really high output engine that revs really, really high and you build a lot of crankcase pressure. Being said, you need to release that pressure and you will release it into a aluminum catch tank. Another reason being you have a show quality bike and you want to keep your motor clean from all oil residue, blow by, things and such. And once again, you will release all of that blow by into your aluminum catch tank. So blow by, I know a lot of y'all are wondering what I mean when I say blow by. Blow by would be physical oil that's being blown along with that crankcase pressure. Um, when you vent these things, if you pay close attention to your lines, you'll see that they may get greasy. Uh, depending on how much power you make, how much you're venting it, you'll see that the lines are actually filling up with oil. That will be your blow bar. If you're like me, I like to keep my motor nice and clean. That blow bar over time builds up a film and residue over your engine. It looks bad, it kind of gets dirty, sticky, nasty, all that bad stuff. All right, y'all, so let's talk about what comes in the trusty catch tank kit. Um, obviously, you got your catch tank, and this is available in an anodized black like the one I have here, or a raw aluminum. If you like polish or stuff like me, it polishes up pretty good. Also, we have our tank bands here, as you can see. We also have our pulse fittings. Um, some may call them breather fittings in this case. But you see, we have a 90 degree breather fitting, and we have a straight breather fitting. Then last but not least, we also have the shutoff. The shutoff is used to drain the catch tank, like I stated earlier. I like to install it in the bottom of the tank. And remember, you want to indicate the top of the tank with the hole on the side. That'll indicate the top of the catch tank. Also, in this project today, we will be using our billet side cover. Um, as an example for our engine, our crankcase, we'll be using a GPS billet valve cover as an example for our head. And also we have two additional quarter inch pulse fittings that you would only be using and buying additionally if you are gonna be using the billet side cover and you're gonna be bent from the billet side cover to the billet valve cover. If you're not using the side cover and you're not venting from the crankcase, and you're only gonna be venting from the head, as you'll see, your billet valve cover will actually come with one NPT brass fitting. So you'll use it to just vent to the catch case, simple as that. But like I said, we're gonna get a little bit more in depth than just a simple head venting. We're gonna do an actual crankcase ventilation setup here today. So that's pretty much a rundown of all the contents of the catch tank. Billet side cover made by ARC, the GPS valve cover, and also our additional catch fittings. Let's get into this installation, y'all. Roll with me. All right, y'all, what we have here will be our plumbing diagram for the aluminum catch tank. And as you can see, we start with one quarter inch fitting. That's in our side cover, AKA our crankcase. From there, we're venting over to our GPS billet aluminum valve cover, AKA our head in this situation. Uh, from there, we're using a quarter inch fitting and venting over to our catch tank. From the catch tank, which is venting out to the air, letting it breathe. And also, we have our um, quarter inch MPT shutoff valve. That is in order to drain your catch tank periodically. Remember that mini bike maintenance, you gotta treat them right for them to treat you right. So let's get started on this installation, y'all. First thing first, we're gonna be prepping our catch tank. Um, most importantly, I wanna let y'all know that I'm not gonna be using it today because this is solely an example. These are brand new parts and they're probably gonna be going back on the shelf. But it is very, very important that you use some type of thread sealer um, just so you're not leaking through your threads and when you install your, all your fittings. I use it on all of my fittings to prevent air and oil from getting through those seals of those threads. And like I say, I'm not gonna be installing it on any of this stuff today because these are brand new example parts, but super critical. 
So let's get into this installation. First thing first, I like to indicate the top of my tank by looking at the side of it. Um, you see you have a hole on the side. That's gonna be the top of your tank. In that hole, I like to start with my 90 degree fitting and I go ahead and install it right there, like so. When it's all said and done, I like for my 90 degree fitting to be pointing down. That way I can just exit that ventilation. Nice, clean, cool, calm, and collect. Keep everything dry, nice and tidy. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and install my top fitting. This is where the ventilation is coming from, the actual head itself. That's gonna be blowing past my actual vent. So you can say this is a positive crankcase pressure, this is a negative pressure that's releasing. Once I get my top one installed, and remember, it's Permatex on these, but once I get my top one installed, I move over to the actual shutoff valve. And the shutoff valve will be installed into the bottom of the tank. And the sole purpose of this shutoff valve is to enable you to drain your tank periodically because that's part of the mini bike maintenance when you install one of these bad boys. You gotta keep in mind that this is filling up periodically. So every so often you need to check your catch tank. You just open up the shutoff valve. If it's oil in it, it'll drain. When it stops draining, shut off your valve. Go kill it, man, send that thing. Now that we got our catch tank prepped, we're gonna move over to our side cover aka our engine, aka our crankcase. So let's get into that. Just like I stated earlier, remember, it's important that you use thread sealing on some of these. Now your side cover won't come with the post fittings, it'll actually come with two block off fittings. That's where our, our additional um, quarter inch post fittings come into play. Um, but just as you did the catch tank, you're gonna do it the same way with a little dab of Permatex. Um, I like to put a little booger size dab on it and just kind of smear it all the way around. That, I, that way I know the full threaded surface is covered. And it'll install right into the top of your kitchen tank, or excuse me, into the top of your side cover. And your block off valve will actually be treated just as a pulse fitting wood. You're gonna use a little Permatex on it because air can come through these threads or oil um, and they can be bad for you. So you wanna do the same method, dab a little Permatex on that bad boy, and you will use a 11 millimeter um, deep dish socket for your post fit, and you will use a, I believe it's a five millimeter Allen head for your block off. Once you get those installed, Permatexed up, good to go, side cover's been prepped. From there, you can go over to your valve cover. Valve cover is kind of the same way. Um, you'll notice that your valve cover, your GPS billet valve cover that is, will come with one post fit. You will need it, same method, Permatex, spread it around, install here. Now that leaves that second, because remember you need two additional quarter inch fittings, that leaves that second one, it's gonna come in handy. That one is gonna exit to your catch tank, so. Imagination, y'all, Permatex. <laughs> so like I said, remember, as 11 mil, um, get that torque down, Permatex, nice and sealed up. All right, y'all, so now that we got all three components nice and prepped, sealed up, ready to roll and be installed, let's get into the plumbing. That'll be the hoses. And y'all see here, I am using a quarter inch section, five foot section, that is, of our handy dandy GPS clear hose. Um, five foot should be plenty. Um, actually more than enough, just in case you mess up. But remember, measure twice, cut once. And because we have Hollywood magic, movie magic, I already have my lines cut here, pre-cut that is. First thing first, when it comes to the plumbing, we're gonna start with our side cover. Remember, this is AKA our crankcase. We already have our pulse fit installed. I'm gonna use a piece of quarter inch hose install it there um, and it's good to use a zip tie or hose clamp in order to keep your hose from blowing off at a high up even because it can't stand a chance of blowing off even though that you'll see your post fittings are made to not release that hose it's just a little extra security from the crankcase we're going to be venting to our head as you can see here you'll have two vents in your head it doesn't particularly matter because they're both going to do the same thing one's going to take air in one's going to blow air out me personally i prefer not to cross lines going over to my head i start on the back hole 
and that'll be coming from my crank over to the head, like you see there. Lay that down. Then from there, we'll be going from our head, AKA our billy side cover, <laughs> over to our catch tank. Now, this is where it comes in the matter, where you're putting your hoses. You'll see, remember we have our top of our catch tank and we indicate that by 90 degree on the side. We want all of that crankcase pressure and blow by to blow past our vent. In doing so, we're gonna blow right into the top of that catch tank. That'll enable all of that blow by to blow past the vent. Remember, your vent's here, it's gonna go past there. Oil and blow by get caught there. Now, venting. This is where we let it breathe, y'all. Gotta let it breathe. Um, that's simple. Just a simple hose, another piece of quarter inch hose. The end of that hose can be zip tied off to the side, um, back of the bike, back of the go-karts. But it's important that you don't vent this by your rear tires. That can be dangerous. Cause remember, a little bit of oil can come out of these. You stand that chance. You don't wanna be blowing out oil in the path of your tires or on your tires. Some people may take uh, some type of filter to put in it, um, that helps. But at the end of the day, you still stand a chance of a little oil coming out of this. So make sure you get that zip tied out of the way, nice, safe, and secure. All right, y'all, so now that we got all our three components plumbed up and ready to roll, got everything breathing nice, let's go check out a couple of examples we got out here in the shop. All right, y'all, so now what we have here will be one of our show bikes. Um, Y'all may know this bike is Dollar Bill. This is the one that Taylor built and took to the Austin hand-built motorcycle show. Um, but we come over here to check out his kitsch tank setup we got here. As you can see, he uses the G the ARC bill of side cover. Just one vent from there. He's venting it over to his head. And he's using the GPS clear valve cover. Works pretty much the same way the billet one was. Um, this is obviously just clear. Not as strong as the billet, but you still get your vents. Um, serves the same purpose. But as you can see, he's coming, he's going into the head, then coming out of the head, like we stated earlier, going into that catch tank, and he's blowing straight down. And you can see it's somewhat different from what we talked about earlier, but it works in the same way because he still has a shut off at the bottom of the tank and he's able to drain that catch can periodically. Um, we are showing y'all this to show you that it doesn't have to be exactly by the book. So now we have Spyro the Dragon. Shout out to Day Day, we love you, dude. We miss you. Um, but you can see we have somewhat of a different method here. We're using two vents out of the catch tank. This motor rear is really, really high, makes lots and lots of power. So you need two vents in order not to blow the oil seals out. And it just makes that much crankcase pressure. But you can see we're running two vents out of the crankcase over to the head. And this one, it gets really saucy because we use our GPS valve cover spacer, as you see, and it also has a vent hole in it. So that's why we're able to utilize that vent hole and it goes to the catch tank. So it's kind of like the other setup, but it's just a little bit more ventilation. It's a little bit more freer. Um, more than likely, if you're doing any kind of drag racing or high revving, this is how you'll have it set up. Not a right or wrong way. It's just different strokes for different folks. All right, y'all, let's get back to the shop. They're probably looking for me. Let's roll. All right, y'all, so I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found this useful. If you didn't, you may be still kind of confused on it, feel free to reach out to us, whether that be email, call us, Facebook, Instagram. If you just want to stop by the shop, maybe look at some examples in person. In Oz, I get it. Y'all make sure y'all stay in touch. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Stay fast. Let's get it. That's it. Nice <laughs> 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 homework, man. Uh. <laughs>